Hobart School of Welding Technology presents Training in Gas Tungsten Arc Welding Pipe and Tubing. Topic number three, lecture discussion. Setup, operation, and shutdown procedure. Objective, to develop a series of procedure steps for properly setting up, adjusting, and shutting down gas tungsten arc welding equipment in order to improve job efficiency and to promote safety. For each job practice in this course, a series of procedure steps take place in order to perform the desired job. This same sequence of events could apply to an actual job situation as well. Basically, the procedure steps are as follows. Number one, to obtain the necessary equipment that is required for the job. Number two, to obtain the necessary materials that are consumed in the welding operation. Number three, to set up the welding equipment, making all necessary electrical, gas, and water connections. Number four, adjust the welding equipment according to the requirements of the job. Number five, to perform the welding operation. And number six, shut off the equipment and clean up the working area. In obtaining the necessary equipment, the welder should ensure personal safety by acquiring protective clothing, gloves, and a helmet. Other equipment required for the job practices include a wire brush, wire cutters, and pliers. In addition, a chipping hammer is necessary when the shielded metal arc process is used. A stainless steel wire brush is used with stainless steel base metals and filler metals. When the equipment has been assembled, the materials for the job practices should be obtained. The base metal, electrodes, filler metals, and shielding gas are listed in each job practice. The base metal selected should be cleaned to remove rust, moisture, paint, grease, or other contaminants prior to welding. The shielding gas for the job practices is argon. The argon should be welding grade, which is almost 100% pure. The filler metal is selected to match the base metal. These filler metals are listed in the job practices by American Welding Society classification. For many of the job practices, the filler metal is E70S1B. The 70 indicates a minimum tensile strength of 70,000 pounds per square inch. The electrode used in the job practices is a 2% thoriated tungsten and is identified by a red band. The 2% thoriated is commonly used for steels since it is characterized by good arc starting, good arc stability, and a high current carrying capacity. For welding steel pipe with direct current, the tungsten should be prepared with a point. A new electrode is normally flat on both ends. To prepare the electrode, sharpen the end to a point on a grinding wheel. The taper should be centered and two and a half electrode diameters long. After grinding, the electrode should be polished to produce as smooth a surface as possible. Finally, grind off about 1 64th inch of the point by touching the tip against the grinding stone. Once the materials have been obtained, then assemble and adjust the welding torch. The torch consists of a torch head, a collet body, gas nozzle, collet, and electrode. The collet and collet body size should match the diameter of the electrode. A 1 8 inch tungsten would require a 1 8 inch collet and collet body. Finally, an electrode cap is used to tighten the electrode securely in the torch. The procedure for assembling the torch is as follows. Thread the collet body into the front end of the torch head finger tight. Screw the gas nozzle onto the collet body. Be sure the nozzle is clean and undamaged. Insert the collet into the back of the torch head. Then place the electrode into the collet body. 
push the electrode through the collet and collet body until it extends about one inch beyond the end of the nozzle. Install the cap and tighten it lightly. Adjust the stick out to the desired amount, usually about one to three electro diameters. Finally, tighten the cap finger tight. Do not use pliers. The equipment is adjusted according to the variables listed in each job practice. Only those variables which require setting are listed. First, set the power source to the desired current. In this course, we will be using direct current electrode negative or straight polarity. Set the current range to the desired amount. Do not set the current to a range which allows the actual current setting to be at the extreme upper or lower limit of the range. Once the current range is set, the amperage is set according to the requirements of the job practice. The amperage registers on the meter only during welding. However, on some power sources, the current can be read on the meter with the following procedure. If you are not using a weld current remote control device, such as a torch mounted control or a foot rheostat, a plug called an energizer is installed on some power sources. The power is turned off and the ground or work lead is connected to the electrode terminal. Once the lead is connected, the power source is turned on. Now, Turn the current control knob and adjust the proper amperage setting as indicated on the ammeter. Turn the power source off and reconnect the ground clamp to the workpiece or to the fixture. When a remote control device is used, such as a torch mounted control or foot rheostat, the procedure is slightly different. The power source remains on but the button control or foot pedal is released to prevent current flow. The ground clamp is connected to the electrode terminal as before. Press the button control or foot pedal to allow current flow and adjust the current control knob until the proper amperage setting is achieved. Release the remote control, reducing the current to zero. Then reconnect the ground lead to the workpiece or the fixture. Once the proper welding current is established, then the shielding gas flow rate is set. First, place the torch in a position where it will not arc. If the gas is stored in a bulk tank system, the gas is transferred to the individual welding stations with a system of piping. At the station, a flow meter is used to establish the desired flow rate. Basically, the welder turns a lever to start the gas flow. Then, the flow meter is set to the desired level. A series of gas lines is used to carry the gas from the regulator to the torch or power source. If the shielding gas is contained in cylinders, the flow meter and hose are connected directly to the cylinder valve. Slowly open the valve on the cylinder while standing to one side of the flow meter as a safety precaution. If remote control is being used, press the foot pedal or torch control to open the gas flow valve or solenoid located in the power source. Adjust the flow rate to the prescribed level, usually about 15 to 20 cubic feet per hour, depending on the size of the nozzle. Sometimes a gas valve is located on the torch, allowing the welder to turn the gas off when not welding. In this case, the gas line is connected directly to the cylinder from the torch, enabling the welder to set the shielding gas flow rate with the power source turned off. If the power source is set up for scratch starting, the high frequency controls, and the hot start, should be off. If a remote control device is being used, it will
will be necessary to set the high frequency and hot start controls. The shielding gas post-purge setting should allow the gas to flow long enough after the arc is broken to prevent oxidation of the electrode. Usually about one second per 10 amps of welding current is sufficient. High frequency is required with a remote control device. The control is set to automatic, which enables the high frequency to turn off once the arc is started. The high frequency adjustment should be set high enough to provide easy arc starting, but not so high that it causes tungsten spitting. The hot start is sometimes used in order to aid in starting the arc. Following equipment setup and workpiece positioning, the process of welding begins. The scratch start method is normally used to start the arc on pipe. To do this, the tungsten point is scratched lightly against the work and then quickly pulled away to the desired arc length. This is similar to striking a covered electrode. In some cases, a copper block is attached to the workpiece for arc starting to prevent contaminating the electrode. Sometimes the torch nozzle cannot be rested against the edges of the joint during welding. This makes it difficult to hold the torch steady. To assist in steadying the torch, a finger stall is used. This allows the welder to rest the end of one finger against the workpiece. When welding with a finger stall, one of two procedures can be used. The first method positions the finger stall and the arc is started. The welder then moves as far as can be reached while the finger stall is held stationary. Welding is then stopped and the finger is repositioned for the next segment. The second method positions the finger stall as if the torch had already been moved as far as possible with the finger held stationary. The arc is started and the finger is slid continuously along the joint as welding progresses. This second method is preferable but requires practice. On larger diameter pipe, the torch nozzle is rested against the joint bevels and the torch is swung from side to side, producing a walking motion. This is commonly called walking the cup. At the end of a weld segment, the puddle is carried up onto the pipe bevel and the arc is broken. This is called cratering out and prevents the formation of hairline cracks at the weld crater. When the welding operation is completed, the following shutdown procedure should be followed. First, hang the torch where it will not arc or be grounded. Close the gas cylinder valve. Bleed the gas line pressure by opening the gas valve at the torch or by pressing the foot pedal or torch control. Close the adjusting valve at the flow meter when no further flow is indicated. Shut off the power source and clean up your working area.